So I want to talk a little bit about what we can measure in the blood and the spinal fluid, because that's going to be a big change in the clinic. And we can measure the breakdown products of nerves, and they're called um, axons, and they release neurofilaments, and they're the little building blocks, the sort of Lego blocks of the nerve. Now, when you measure it in the blood, you get high levels in, in patients, lower levels in healthy controls, but you can see there's a bit of an overlap. This person might be wrongly diagnosed here, and this person might be wrongly diagnosed here. When you look at it in the spinal fluid, it's virtually a, a complete separation. Now, I think that will improve in the blood test, but it's one of the reasons why we have to develop these things in spinal fluid. It's not that we enjoy sticking needles in people's backs, but it's not a dangerous thing to do, but it's a lot to ask, and we wouldn't want to do it if we didn't need to but it's been enormously valuable to be able to. And what it's shown us is these are the levels of neurofilament over time, and they're quite stable, which fits with what I said about the disease progression. If it's slow, it's slow, low levels of neurofilament. If it's medium, slightly higher, and if it's fast, higher levels. So the level of neurofilament tells you how active the disease is. So now, in a trial, we can take everyone we don't have to say, oh, have you got enough upper motor neuron signs, all these sort of ridiculous comments, or how long have you had the condition for, and people get excluded for having a slow disease, which can't be right. But we could put everyone in a trial, and we could say, we've got a marker here, neurofilaments, and let's see if we give the drug if the neurofilament level drops. Because if it does for everyone, perhaps not so much for some people, it won't drop as much for someone who's already slow. But if it does drop overall... Let's carry on. That drug's working. And conversely, if it doesn't drop, we can move on. 